Hey everybody, I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and if you're anything like me, Sekiro is giving you a really hard time. Sekiro straight up thermonuclear detonates everything you thought you knew about Soulsborne gameplay, creating something that's just as much about all out action and countering as now all new slow burn stealth. There's a pace to Shadows Die Twice that's utterly exhausting through sheer atmospheric intensity. The game's combat putting the focus on reading enemy animations and parrying specific attacks, resulting in a level of concentration that I don't think any other game has ever come close to. To survive, you'll need patience, skill, and a few thousand restarts, but thankfully I've already died and came back a few thousand times more to bring you all the following advice. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and this is Sekiro 18 Tips and Tricks the Game Doesn't Tell You. Number 18, hold R1 to do a guard-breaking stab. One of the most essential techniques in the game, maybe I missed it near the beginning, but holding R1 will let you do a more pronounced forward stab. It's perfect for breaking that last chunk of an enemy's posture or cleaving right through their guard. Now there is a noticeable windup that leaves you vulnerable and the enemy AI will take advantage of this to get a few hits in, so always be mindful of exactly when you want to use this. Number 17, you're invulnerable during a final blow. It's a souls adjacent game, so you're gonna get mobbed. In Sekiro though, it's actually beneficial to keep fighting that one enemy whose posture is about to break, because if you can trigger the final blow animation, everything else coming your way will miss. It feels like a bit of a glitch, but you are invulnerable during these finishing animations no matter how long they last. You can use this to your advantage in tight situations, pressing the offensive and winning the fight by absorbing some enemy attacks and then countering afterwards when they've opened up again. Number 16, fleeing battle and hiding will reset enemy health. Something I learned the hard way. Sekiro does bring in Tenchu style stealth mechanics, but there are things in place to prevent you cheesing the AI. Take to the rooftops and you'll see enemies' heads track your movements for a good half minute afterwards. This is the game's way of telling you that that particular encounter is still active, but if you break sight or otherwise disconnect from combat, enemy health will reset back to maximum. As I'll get to later, stealth kills can be very valuable in any encounter, so if you're retreating from about, make sure it's just for a quick heal or to catch your breath, as too long and you'll have to fight them from the beginning all over again. Number 15, you can stealth kill unaware enemies amongst aware enemies. Speaking of stealth, just because you've alerted one or a handful of enemies doesn't mean the entire location is on alert. Unlike many other stealth titles where the whole world comes bearing down on you after getting spotted, in Sekiro you can continue thinning the ranks of any location by getting away from the immediate vicinity. Enemies away from wherever you're being chased will still be in their patrol animations, and if you're heading in this general direction towards your next goal anyway, just pull off a stealth kill or two before dealing with the rest. Lastly, note that some enemies will go back to their patrol routes before others, i.e. some tire of chasing you while others don't, so doubling back on yourself to kill the ones that have forgotten about you can be very beneficial if you time it right. Number 14, there are specific unlockable skills for specific encounters. Sekiro is the first of From Software's games to give us a dedicated skill tree with specific moves and animations to unlock along the way. It's extremely handy as a way to chart character progression outside of the usual numerics we associate with RPGs, but best of all, various skills in here correlate with specific enemies. Near the beginning of the game, for example, you'll have one hell of a time with a shinobi hunter, a fearsome spear-wielding enemy who keeps his distance, jabbing at you from afar like every spear-wielding enemy does. Grind out enough currency for the Makiri counter, however, and you'll get a spear-specific counter involving dashing straight into that oncoming attack to leap on top of the guy's spear and fight back. Essentially, this is the game teaching you that grinding out XP to get moves can benefit some encounters in a one-to-one -one basis, and it's a mentality that you should carry across the entire game. Maybe if you're having a hard time with an enemy, there's a unique move that you're yet to unlock. Number 13, use the axe prosthetic to break shields. Another pointer for early gameplay and the horrifically annoying Juzuo boss, make sure that you have the axe on hand to shatter all those enemy shields. Without it, you're at the mercy of complete damage reductions when they're guard, and even trying to break through will just see them shield bash you away anyway. Sekiro's health is so small at the beginning that even 3-4 to four bashes is enough to kill you, which to be honest is a really lame way to go, to say the least. There are additional moves to unlock that can help with shields and of course stealth is always there too, but as the axe is easily missable by not visiting the temple and some bosses come with shielded grunt helpers, you're so much better off equipping this early. Number 12, take time before resurrecting to stealth kill again. Another shakeup from the standard Soulsborne formula or the vast majority of games, Sekiro can come back to life after being bested by a particular enemy or any part of the environment. Hell, you can even fall right off the side of the map and just pop back to life on a nearby outcrop of land, ready to try again. However, in the throes of rage that usually accompany getting flattened by an NPC, do not mash the respawn button. Doing so will spring you back to life right when enemies are still on alert and sometimes you can get caught in the next blade swing, killing you all over again straight away. 
Instead, take your time, rotate the camera and see where those enemies have retreated back to. There's a proximal awareness zone to your resurrection animation that will re-engage combat if they're not far enough, but wait it out and you can stealth kill that annoying enemy instantly, moving on without breaking a sweat. Number 11, this screen icon during combat triggers a unique animation. Sekiro does half indicate this mechanic during base gameplay in that the grapple hook icons that adorn the environment change from grey to green when they can be interacted with using L2 or left trigger. However, that's also the same for enemies. Mini bosses like the Ogre or horse riding Gyobu Oniwa have windows of opportunity where the grapple icon will appear above their heads, letting you know that there's a unique animation available. In the Ogre's case, it's a head kick that staggers him and allows you to follow up with a combo. Whereas in Oniwa's fight, the grapple is only used to close distance, letting you get up close for a quick attack before getting the hell out of his way again. Mastering Sekiro's combat means mastering all combat options at your disposal, so don't ever miss these particular button prompts. Number 10, press L2 to grab branches when thrown off the map. Thank you very much to Jules for this one, as another thing to remember at all times is even when you're being plummeted off the side of a map after being thrown out of combat, you can still use the grapple hook or jab L2 to save yourself. The former is your standard grapple to point animation, but you'll need to rotate the camera and look for spots to attach it to. Coincidentally, if you get thrown right past a tree branch, Sekiro can grab onto it with a unique animation if you tap L2 while flying past. You need very fast reflexes for this, but it can save losing some health, getting you right back into the fight for a quick riposte. Number 9, you can die more than twice. Yes, it's called Shadows Die Twice, but if you're patient and skilled enough, you can extend this to multiple deaths on any given run. See, Sekiro's respawns are denoted by two small purple slash pink icons in the bottom left of the screen. When you perish in combat, one of these goes away, but an inky black streak will appear over both pips. This means that respawns are blocked, which they would be on your last life anyway, but once this streak goes away, you can begin filling up your second life icon once again by killing enemies. Use stealth to off grunts as any enemy death refills a chunk of the meter, and when it's full, that's one more additional life for that particular run. Basically, you can die as many times as you like away from boss encounters, providing you can find enough enemies to kill to refill the node. Number 8, you can double jump in combat. Somewhat like the masterful Devil May Cry 5, which single-handedly proved there's an itch to be scratched when it comes to spectacle fighters in the modern day, you can double jump in combat to maximize evasion and aerial attacks. Of course, Sekiro is nowhere near as over the top as Devil May Cry, and this game's double jump requires a wall to kick off. The best thing is though, you can perform this second jump in any direction by pushing the analog stick wherever you want to go before hitting X or A. Keep your surroundings in mind when jumping around enemies and you can execute this makeshift double jump to great effect. Number 7, Named Enemies Have Prayer Beads. How to get more health and posture. Doing away with grinding out a health stat like the previous Souls games or Bloodborne, Sekiro's HP upgrades are tucked away behind acquiring prayer beads. Now the game does tell you this, but not where to get the beads themselves. Thankfully, they're dropped by named enemies in the land, with an early example being the Shinobi Hunter. Just look to the top of the screen when fighting someone, and if they have a name and aren't a siphoned off boss with their own area, chances are that they're gonna drop a bead. Always keep in mind that you have the skill tree when taking these guys on. Chances are there's a specific move that'll give you the upper hand, and bringing four prayer beads back to the sculptor's idol will increase both your health and posture. As far as I can tell, this is the only way to make Sekiro as a character more resilient, so explore the map and find all those named enemies. Number 6, self kill from above to remove a sub boss's health pip. A tactic that gets increasingly hard to pull off depending on who you're going up against, the vast majority of these named enemies or sub-boss encounters can have their difficulty sliced in half by sneaking up on them first. Years of Soulsborne gameplay and the general flatlining of the stealth genre has kind of taught us the opposite, but if you see some ominously positioned foe looking to fight the next thing they see, take to the rooftops and maneuver around them instead. Sneaking up on foot is a surefire way to get surprise stabbed as the enemy likely knew that you were there all along, but leap in from on high and you can perform a dropping aerial stealth kill, one that will take an entire life bar off, making that a much fairer fight. Number 5, take out specific enemies first. Like any good stealth game, there are certain enemies that you should prioritize, because if they see you first, they'll call the cavalry. It means you're best getting a solid vantage point and really scrutinizing which items the enemies are holding, or if there are any specific creatures nearby. Swap through your items using the D-pad and tap up when the telescope is equipped to make that much easier. The enemies you're looking for across the first few levels of the game anyway are those with pans and torches, and also watch out for those oversized roosters. All three make a ton of noise when alerted, and you're better off sticking to stealth if you want to grind out some XP, or if you're just trying to not get noticed by an upcoming area of enemies. Number 4, eavesdrop on enemies for item locations and secrets. The key to finding the likes of the axe and the flame vent, all sorts of prosthetic accessories for your arm, is listening in to NPC conversations using down on the d-pad, but really take note of what they're saying. 
Even in the first Harada Estate Dream, after a dying villager describes retrieving the axe from the temple, you can pinpoint which one this is by listening into a conversation between two enemies, deciding whether or not to ransack the place in front of them. Likewise, for the Shinobi Hunter being a named character that holds a prayer bead, listen close and a couple of guards will be talking about how intimidating he is, letting you know to focus attention on him when the time comes. Number 3. Keep distance between enemies when stealth killing to avoid alarms. Like resurrecting too quickly and alerting all those nearby to your new lease on life, Sekiro's stealth kill animations are so gruesome and over the top that they make enough noise to draw enemies into the immediate vicinity anyway. Sekiro's AI guard patterns are mostly set to patrol in certain sequences and loops, but you can knock these out of sync either by engaging in a fight and then disappearing, or using a ceramic shard to throw as a distraction. Standard stealth game rules then apply. Throwing the item creates a radius of noise rather than something heard by everyone, so use this to scatter enemy forces and then move in for the kill. Number 2. Advanced Stealth Moves Some beautiful Tenchu slash Shinobido type business, your array of stealth moves isn't just restrained to those from behind. Instead, you can do a stealth kill while looking around a corner. Just hug a wall and move to the corner as the enemy is nearby. The red kill prompt will still appear as normal and you'll be treated to a lovely wall-specific kill animation. The same goes for aerial kills. Once you jump into mid-air and you see the red icon below, just hit the stealth button and Sekiro will go into the animation that he drops into so that you always get the timing right. There's no worrying about pressing the button the second you get close enough to an NPC. Just jump into the air, hit the button and Sekiro will do the rest. And as for hanging kills, position yourself underneath an enemy so that they're walking alongside a cliff edge or outcrop above, and then you should get the red icon again. Combine all these stealth moves together with everything on this list, and you can play Sekiro kind of like a spiritual sequel to Tenchu, which, as a huge Tenchu fan, is all I'm going to be doing. And number one, you can parry the unblockable moves. Now this does require pixel precise action, but though the game does tell you there are a slew of unblockable moves that you need to leap over or dodge away from, you can parry them using L1 or LB, providing you press the button at exactly the right time. Essentially, it's the parry system of old Dark Souls, the harder technique of timing being the crux of everything, rather than Sekiro's standard system where you're opening up a window of counterability and letting the attack connect. Either way, grabs are the only thing you have to stay away from as everything else can be met steel for steel, providing that your timing is perfect. And that's my list. Let me know down in the comments below if you've been playing a whole bunch of Sekiro and what you found out while playing it. I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. Please check out the WhatCulture Gaming Podcast and I'll catch you soon.